Hello, this is Katie with Happy Hearted Watercolors. And today we're going to work on a lesson that will help us think through the ideas of composition. Composition is only the idea of making a pleasing scene. And there's lots of technical ways to look at it. But I think the best way to look at it is to just think about what looks best on a page. So what I've done is I've found several images of bottles, traced them out on a piece of paper, then I cut them out, and then just started playing around with them on the paper, trying to imagine them sitting on a table in, in some sort of a tableau. So you could try it with one, three, or five, or you could even do uh, more than that. But the more bottles you get in there, the more challenge you're going to have in how this bottle looks as it shines through to this bottle and this bottle sitting on top of that bottle sitting on top of this bottle. So I encourage you to play around with that composition. And what I've done is I've created a composition, several different compositions, by making some thumbnail sketches. And here's some thumbnail sketches I've just tried out on a little notebook that I keep for that same purpose. And then eventually what I did is I went ahead and traced this composition on my paper using a, a transfer paper, not carbon paper, and tracing each bottle on and thinking about what lays on top of what else. So here we go with our start of, of what we did. This bottle was simple in that all I needed to do was mask out some of the shiny, shiny areas that I wanted to shine up and go ahead and put a base down and then add some different deepening of the shadows, deepening of the backside of the glass, uh, and that's where I stopped right there, so we didn't make this video too long. The next thing I did was I took the place where the blue bottle was behind what I was going to make a red bottle. And I put down a little intermediate layer right there so that I could kind of see what it would look like. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on the blue bottle since everything is dry. And I'm just going to lay down my first glaze with my beautiful blue, and I'm gonna call it cobalt blue because that's a very common blue color of bottle. And I'm going to use, in this case, a number 20 brush. This is a synthetic blend with natural hair and synthetic hair, which both makes it um, good at holding water and pigment and giving it a nice spring so that it doesn't fall over on me as a natural hair brush might do. So I'm gonna go ahead and work, in this case, I'm gonna work wet in wet because I wanna make sure that I don't get my paint too dark to start out with. This is a glaze and a glaze is just a light painting of one color over another. In some cases, a glaze will go over the top of another color and it will change the color. Now you're gonna notice as we get going that this color here that I put a purple is going to look different with the blue over it and working carefully going up to but not touching my cork for the other bottle and I'm just going inside a line
So here we go with my blue, which I covered up. Where did my blue paint go? Oh, there's my blue paint. I put it in my board. I use a gator board um, for my um, work so that my paint doesn't buckle so badly. And I just have a really nice lightweight board that carries easily as well as um, gives a nice back drop for my work. And as always, I use a, I call it a tri-paper or a tester to see what my paint is going to look like because I don't want to put anything on my paper that I don't know what it's going to look like. So in this lid, and these are just Yarka paints. They're fairly inexpensive, maybe $12, depending on where you get them. Currently in January 2021, we're not seeing them in very many places. So um, another very inexpensive solution we've found are, surprisingly enough, a professional grade of praying in a small pan. It's got, gosh, I think it's got maybe 24 colors in it. And they're nice and bright. They seem to work pretty well. I work with a small group of children and they seem to go pretty fast, but they are very satisfying. When we, when we lay down the color, we all feel like, oh good, this is great. So I'm going to just finish this. And this is going to be called part one of this lesson because it would take too long, I will need to go ahead and dry this very carefully um, after my paint stops moving around on the paper. You want to always move your board, that's another reason to use the getter board, until the paint stops moving. Once the paint stops moving around, then you can stop moving the board. If you stop moving the board, you'll end up with what they call blooms. Now, blooms aren't necessarily bad, but they can be surprising in ways we may like or we may not like. On this finished prod, product so you can see that kind of sliding down there so we want to make sure that we just keep this moving so I'm going to stop now part two will be coming soon